Okay, good morning everybody. Welcome to our monthly webinar. This month's topic will be batch reporting. Uh, if this is your first time joining us on our webinars, just to give you a little information about our format, because we have a lot of people uh, that attend our webinars, I do mute everybody. Um, if you have questions at all during the presentation, I ask that you email them to our support desk, crc at pennyatworks.com. At the end of the session, I'll take a look and see what questions have come in. Uh, if I don't get to your question today, um, I'll reach out to you uh, later today with an answer. And of course, if you, you know, think about it and you come up with questions later on or another day, please feel free to reach out to our help desk, uh, crc at pennyatworks.com. Okay, so let's begin. So today we're going to be talking about batch reporting. Now, the purpose of batch reporting, really it makes life easier. It's a way of automating the running of your reports. And it gives you the ability to run multiple reports at one time. This comes in very handy uh, for, for example, month-end packages when every month you're running a trial balance and income statement, uh, fee reports, and you would normally, you know, close the fund and then have to go through each section and run the report and save it individually, what batch reporting gives you the ability to do is with just one click, create a month-end package of all your reports. So let's get started. So the first thing, we actually have to take a step back from batch reporting because the first thing we need to set up is what are called our report filters. Now if you notice when you run reports in Penny, and some of you may be familiar, at the top here you have select profiles. And what is this? This is our report profiles. To set up a report profile, you can just run your report the way you normally would. So you pick your company, you can put in your date, uh, whether you run it in detail or summary, whatever um, specifics you have to your report. Then down here you have save profile. This is where you are going to name your report profile. So, so for this purpose, let's just call this webinar test. Now when you save your report profile, you have availability. Now this depends on your user setup. On your user setup, you can be set up for private, environment, or global. Now if your user setup's private, your only selection here is gonna be private. If it's global on your user setup, you're gonna have all three available. And what this does is it allows you to choose who gets to see this report profile. If you select private, only you can see this. Only your user ID is gonna have this as a choice. Environment gives anyone that logs into the environment the ability to use it, and global will run across multiple environments. So for this, I'm just gonna set it up as private. So when you hit okay, it's gonna run the report. I'm just gonna hop out and go back in, because now, webinar test. And when you select the report profile, it's going to automatically populate with the information that you saved. Now, that's great, you know, for the company or the running detail summary, but the, the date's always changing. So if you go to manage profiles, you have um, a good selection of what dates to use. Because you can save your profile 731, and that might be helpful right now as you're working on July's month end package, but, you know, come November, July is, is gone. You don't even need that date anymore. So what this does is it can automatically default. So you can do, if you're doing daily, you could do default to the prior day. You can always work on the prior month, the prior year. So for example, if I save this as prior year, it's going to run the report. Now I'm going to come back and when I select the profile, the date's going to automatically default to the prior year. What this does for batch reporting is when you run the multiple reports, 
Penny needs to know what company you're running it for, whether you want it in detail or summary. So this is where you set up how you want your report run. So once we have our report filter set up, we can go to batch reporting. Now batch reporting is found under the admin tab. There's a section called batch reporting. And unlike a lot of the other sections in Penny, there's only, there's only two choices. You have report set and the actual uh, process utility batch reporting. So this is nice and simple. So what the report set, we're gonna go into that first. What the report set allows is allows you to save a, an entire set of reports. So for example, a month end package. So you give it a name. You also have availability as well. So again, back to the whether it's private for just your user ID or if it's something you want across environments or just for one environment. Now you can add as many reports as you want. So I have one set up here. It's a general month end package. We have the trial balance, the balance sheet, partners capital, and the incentive and management fee calculation reports. Adding a new report is easy. You put it in, you give it an order, you select your report type. These are all of the reports in Penny. So you, for example, select trial balance, and now your report profiles, this is where the report profiles come in, because now you select the profile that you set up. The title, this is important for when the file is saved. If you put in a title, that's what Penny will use to name your report. If you leave it blank, it will just default to the actual name of the report in Penny. So for trial balance, that's pretty simple. Uh, if you leave this blank, it's going to call it trial balance. In my case, I called it TB. So since I put a title in, when Penny saves the report, it's going to default to using TB. Now I'm gonna get into the order in a little bit. You'll see when we run the reports, but if you, um, Penny does have the ability to run it as one file, and that's where the order comes in. So you can actually specify how you want the output by defaulting to um, the order. So let's run some reports. So batch reporting output. Here you have a couple different choices. On the output section at the top, you can run the report. This is to export it to PDF, or you can do it in data grid. You have the ability to save as one file. When you save as one file, uh, for the data grid, since that's an Excel file, it's going to put each report on a separate tab. And for PDF, it's actually going to create bookmarks, um, and I'll show you uh, the output for that as well. You also have the ability whether you want it to stop on error or keep processing. So sometimes if you have multiple reports in your report set, uh, if for some reason there's an error running a report, do you want the whole process to stop, or do you want it to keep going and just not run that one report? you have your directory. This is where the report is going to be saved. The name, this is what you're going to call your report. And you have the ability to put a password, so you can password protect um, your report as well. Just note that the password is only for the PDF. Um, it's, it's not for the data grid at this time. Okay, so we have this. Let's put a, a test one together. So down here you have the details. So if you click Add, you now have the ability to put in reports. So I'm going to give it an order, number one, and let's do that report set that we just created. So I'm gonna choose month end package. So by hitting output, I'm going to also put the dates. Let's see. Let's do last month. Seven, 31. So by hitting output, it's now going to create a PDF report as one file into this directory called webinar test. 
when you hit output, it doesn't take too long to run and you will get a confirmation that everything has run successfully. If there are any issues, you will also get a warning message uh, indicating if any issues were hit. So here we go, the batch report is has been successfully completed. So if I go to that directory, here's our webinar test. And this is what it looks like if you're running the PDF as one file. So you'll see you get the bookmarks, and these are now the titles of the report. So remember I talked about trial balance versus TB. Since I named it TB, that's why it's listed as TB. So you can now run through all of your reports and you have them saved as one file. So this comes in very handy, again, for month-end processing because now by just selecting your report package and hitting output, you've just saved yourself the time of running five reports as one report. It's also, if you do have a month-end package, the ability to combine them into one file, which you can easily password protect. Um, and again, this comes in handy, you know, if you ever have to make a change and then rerun all your reports, you're just doing it with a click of the button and not having to go back and run each one individually. So let's take a look at some of the other formats. So I mentioned you can do this in Excel as well. So just to show you what it would look like if you ran it into uh, Data Grid, again, you have multiple reports. Each one is going to be a separate tab. So you have your trial balance, your balance sheet, partner capital, and again, you can call these tabs whatever you would like uh, based upon the title you gave it on the report set. You also have the ability, if you uncheck this, uh, it will save them as individual files. So let's take a look at that. So if I save it unchecked as individual files, month end package, you're going to get balance sheet incentive. I called it when I saved the separate incentive management partners capital and TB. And again, it's going to name the file with the title you indicated on the report set, or it's going to default to using the actual name of the report. So in this case, you'll get actual just individual PDFs. Now, if you, you know, you can have your report sets that you use monthly, you can also do an ad hoc report. So instead of selecting a report set, you can just select the reports you want and the report profiles. And again, you can give it a title, whichever you would like. So not only do you have the ability to use a report set, but you can just um, do an ad hoc for whatever report you would like. Um, for the filter overrides, this allows you to um, override the report filters that you created. If you leave everything blank, it's going to know what fund to run it for or what date to run it for based upon your settings in the report filter. So if your report filters are set up for a specific fund and are set to the date prior month, without having to indicate anything in the section, it's going to run for that fund for that date. But you can, you know, as in Penny, you always have the ability to override. You can override the fund. So let's say you have a report set for um, one specific fund, but now you want to run it for a different fund. You can override it by choosing a different fund or populating it with different dates. You can also uh, run the batch reporting by consolidation, and you can um, also override by investor as well. Um, a couple things to note just on the naming convention. Um, if there's already uh, a file that exists with that name, Penny is not going to just automatically override it. Uh, what it will do is it will change the name and add in today's date as well. So let's say you have a, a file and you're going to name it uh, month end. And 
next month you create the same file and you call it month end. It's not just going to override the one you have in there. It's going to know to add the date so as to have a separate file. So at this time, I'm just going to take a look and see if any questions have come in. Okay, we actually don't have any questions today. So if you do have any questions going forward, please let me know. Um, this will conclude our webinar for today. Please join us again next month, Thursday, September 18th. We're going to be covering backloading. So we're going to be touching on uh, the backloading process. So, and also a reminder, uh, we do record these webinars. So if you um, want to listen to this again or uh, want to share it with your coworkers, uh, they are posted up on our extranet as well as on YouTube and Vimeo. So thank you very much. See you next month.